Hi, I'm Danielle with frenzyofnoise.blogspot.com and this is my first Fragment Friday. If you don't know what that is, it's when a blogger picks a piece of a book that they are currently reading or that they love and they vlog it and you can, you know, get a little snippet of something really awesome. Um, just a disclaimer, the book I'm about to read you is set in the South. I went to school in the South. I know all the places they talk about, and I know the accent, so it'll probably be really southern as I talk. Any clues yet as to what that is? Um, well, okay, here's the answer. I'm going to read Beautiful Darkness um, by Kimmy Garcia and Margaret Stoll, and it is really awesome. Um, this is the second book in the series. The first one, if you don't know, is called Beautiful Creatures, and if you've never read it, then stop watching this vlog, go buy it read it and then come back and you can get a little snippet. Um, Beautiful Darkness comes out on October 26th and you should definitely pick it up. Um, so what's going on so far in the story is at the end of the first one, Lena's uncle dies. And the second one picks up right after that. And you see Ethan dealing with Lena, who's dealing with all this stuff and everything is really confusing and she hasn't been at school for weeks. Um, and this piece I'm going to read is her first day back at school. And it takes place in chapter 3, which I'm just going to show you how pretty. It's called Lemon and Ashes. Le Lemons and Ash. And it happens on 417, which is also important because it's my birthday. And it's half the reason I picked this section is because it was on my birthday on 417. So, without further ado, I bring you some beautiful darkness. Lena rested her shoulder against mine the whole way to school. But when we got to the parking lot, she couldn't bring herself to get out of the car. I didn't dare turn off the engine. Savannah Snow, the queen of Jackson High, walked past us, hitching, hitching her tight t-shirt above her jeans. Emily Asher, her second in command, followed behind, texting as she slid between cars. Emily saw us and grabbed Savannah by the arm. They stopped. The response of any Gatlin girl's mom had raised her right when faced with the relative of a recently departed. Savannah clutched her books to her chest, shaking her head at us sadly. It was like watching an old silent movie. Your uncle's in a better place now, Lena. He's up in the pearly chorus of angels leading him to his ever-loving maker. I translated for Lena, but she already knew what they, were think what they were thinking. Stop it. Lena slid her battered spiral notebook in front of her face, trying to disappear. Emily held up her hand, a timid half-wave, giving us our space, letting us know she was not only well-bred, but sensitive. I didn't have to be a mind reader to know what she was thinking, either. I'm not coming over there because I'm letting you grieve in peace, sweet Lena Ducanus, but I will always, and I do mean always, be here for you like the good book and my mama taught me. Emily nodded to Savannah, and the two of them walked slowly and sadly away, as if they hadn't started the guardian angels. Jackson's version of a neighborhood watch a few months ago with the sole purpose of getting Lena kicked out of school. In a way, this was worse. Emory ran up to catch with them, catch, ran to catch up with them, but he saw us and slowed to a somber walk, wrapping on the hood of my car as he walked by. He hadn't said a word to me in months, but now he was showing his support. They were all so full of crap. Don't say it. She had rolled herself down into a ball in the passenger seat. Can't believe he didn't take off his cap. His mom is going to kick the tar out of him when he gets home. I turned off the engine. Play this right and you might make the cheer squad after all, sweet Lena Ducanus. There. There's such. She was so angry for a minute. I regretted saying it. But it was going to be happening all day. And I wanted her to be prepared before she set foot in the halls of Jackson. I'd spent too much time being poor Ethan Way, his mama died just last year, not to know that. Hypocrites? That was an understatement. Sheep. That too. I don't want to be in their squad. I don't want to seat at their table. I don't want them to even look at me. I know Ridley was manipulating them with her powers, but if they hadn't thrown that party on my birthday, if I'd stayed inside Ravenwood just like Uncle Macon wanted, I didn't need her to finish. He might still be alive. You can't know that, Lena. Seraphine would have found another way to get to you. They hate me, and that's how it should be. Her hair was beginning to curl, and for a second I thought there was going to be a downpour. 
She put her head in her hands, ignoring the tears that were losing themselves in her crazy hair. Something has to say the same. I'm nothing like them. I hate to break it to you, but you, ne but you never were, and you never will be. I know, but something's changed. Everything's changed. I looked out my window. Not everything. Boo Radley, Macon's dog, stared back at me. He was sitting on the faded white line of the parking space next to ours, as if he'd been waiting for this moment. Boo followed Lena everywhere like a good caster dog. I thought about how many times I considered giving that dog a ride, saving him some time. I opened the door, but Boo didn't move. Fine, be that way. I started to pull the door closed, knowing Boo would never get in. As I did, he, le he leaped up into my lap and across the gear shift and into Lena's arms. She buried her face in his fur, breathing deeply, as if the mangy dog created some kind of air that was different from the air outside. They were one quivering mass of black hair and black fur. For a minute, the whole universe seemed fragile, like it could fall apart if I so much as blew in the wrong direction or pulled the wrong thread. I knew what I needed to do. I couldn't explain the feeling, but it came over me as powerfully as the dreams had, when I saw Lena for the first time. The dreams we'd always shared. So real, they left mud on my sheets, or river water dripping onto my floor. This feeling was no different. I needed to know what thread to pull. I needed to be the one who knew the right direction. She couldn't see her way clearer where she was right now, so it had to be me. Lost. <laughs> That's what she was. And it was the one thing I couldn't, I couldn't let her be. I shifted into reverse. We'd only made it as far as the parking lot, and I knew without a word that it was time to drive Lena home. Boo kept his eyes closed the whole time. Wasn't that so good? Um, it was so good. The whole book is amazing. So, on October 26th, pick it up. Beautiful Darkness. You can watch that again and again until then because I know that you're just like dying with anticipation because it's really good. Alright, have a happy Friday.